Pastor. Everybody praise the Lord. Today is going to be a great day in your life. And the Lord will bless everyone beyond your expectation. Salvation today. Healing today. Deliverance today. The day of his power. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the coming days. We thank you for the final day that will eventually come. Lord, we pray you give us the wisdom to think through, think of the present, think of the future, and think of the final reckoning day. We're asking, Lord, that you make everyone wise unto salvation. Wise unto redemption. Wise unto what you're doing and what you want to do and what will happen on the final day. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen. A great Enugu amen. God bless you. You can sit down. You would have discovered that as we come to the presence of God, we do not come to, you know, play football. We do not come to entertain. We do not come to just shout and be happy momentarily. And then the real serious problems of life we don't deal with. Here we come tonight and we're thinking and talking and testifying of what will happen very soon. There are things happening now. The things going to happen as we move on in life. There's something going to happen as we get to the end of the road. We've been talking about the power of God, the day of his power. That power, when we say the day of his power, in the past, the day of his power. In the present, the day of his power. On the final day, when he will manifest power and raise all the people that have been dead from the very foundation of the world until the final day. That's going to be the great manifestation of the day of his power. When the just and the unjust will rise again and then go before the Lord, what great power he will manifest at that time. And as we're talking about the day, Number one, there's the day of repentance. When we come to the Lord and we're sorry in our heart, with regret for what we have done, we plead for salvation. The day of repentance. It is that day of repentance that leads to the day of restoration, that the Lord restores us to his favor. To his grace and he restores us unto what we lost in Adam, the day of restoration. If we're sick in a body, there is the day of recovery. We recover from blindness, we recover from all the terrible things that we carry in our body. There is the day of recovery there is the day of redemption he planned redemption for us he planned reconciliation for us there is a day of redemption but you know for some other people who say no i don't want any day of repentance i don't want any day of restoration reconciliation i don't want any day of uh, redemption all they want the day of rebellion. That is the day of rebellion. 
for all humanity because we're free moral agents. And God does not force repentance on us. He does not force recovery on us. He does not force redemption on us. There is for, for people the day of rebellion. There is the day of rejection. Look at your Savior. He died on the cross of Calvary to save you. Uh -uh, no, I have religion. I don't, I don't need to be born again. There's the day of rejection. And if we reject so great salvation, what will happen to us? Because the final day is still coming. There's the day of rejection. There is the day eventually of reckoning when everybody will stand in the presence of God and that great white throne judgment will take place is the day of reckoning and the books will be opened and the works you have done everything we have said everything we have done every place we have gone every life you have corrupted every evil you have perpetrated you have activated in life and the corruption that you perpetrate flowing into the lives of different people there is that day when we come to god face to face and there is the day of reckoning but happy for the people who have made use of the day of repentance very well. They have made use of the day of restoration, reconciliation, regeneration very well. They have made use of the day of recovery very well. And they have made use of the day of redemption very well. And they are saved. And they are redeemed. And their lives have been turned around for them there's going to be the day of resurrection the trumpet shall sound and the graves will be opened and all the people that have died from the beginning of creation until that time because jesus said the dead shall hear the voice of the son of man and all those who are in the grave they will rise up they just will go to the right hand side the unjust will see resurrect and they will go to the left hand side for judgment and suffering there is the day of resurrection there's the day of the rapture when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in christ shall rise and we which are alive will be raised up to meet him forever and to stay with him forever. It's because of that final day, the day of reckoning, the day of resurrection, the day of the rapture. That's why we need to be wise today and say, Lord, I want to be ready. I'm reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And we're looking at verse 1. <clears throat> Thank you very much. The Lord bless you. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. This time, when the opportunity is still there to have the day of repentance. Remember the Lord, your creator, in the days of thy youth. And then it says that as we remember while... The evil days come not. It says, now the day of reconciliation, the day of restoration, the day of redemption. Remember now that Christ died for you on the cross of Calvary. Don't wait for the evil day. It says, when the evil days have not come. You know, some people say, I will repent. I will repent. When somebody is, saying, is pushing ahead the day of repentance. 
and the day of restoration and the day of salvation i will repent don't worry about me and eventually maybe an accident happens the pain of the accident that you had that the person has is so serious you said you were repent let them take this pain away i'm dying i'm dying and he doesn't have the chance to repent when he said he repent or suddenly something happens and is about to leave the world and the confusion in the heart the condemnation in the mind everything coming together does not give him chance he has gambled away the day of repentance and so that death now comes ushers him to eternity he had all the privileges he had all the messages but now there's no way for him to repent he says when thou shalt say i have no pleasure in them when you become tired of everything when nothing satisfies you you know when those women that uh, you know come 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 and uh, you know you went and you did whatever you wanted to do this day now when death knocks at the door this day now when the final day of retribution when it comes there's no interest in those women anymore no interest in those men anymore all those good good pictures and nice pictures of half-dressed ladies and all that that interest people now that day when that final day comes you have no pleasure in them anymore but you just come to realization you've wasted your life your opportunities you've wasted everything because now the things that used to please you they don't please you anymore look at verse 7 there in verse 7 it tells us it says then shall the dust return to the dust of the earth as it was our body smidge from the doors any real good scientist will tell you that there is a is combina our body is combination of water and dust and the 16 elements that are found in the doors they're found in the body and then much water in the body now eventually the day of reckoning the final day will come then shall the dust return to the earth as it was and the spirit shall return unto god who gave it that's what we are talking about today the day of return unto god the day of returning a great day it comes to everyone by and large sooner or later it will come but what you do with the day of repentance what you do with the day of restoration what you do with the day of recovery what you do with the day of reconciliation redemption what you do with this day when the call comes to you will determine what will happen on the day of return unto God. I pray you'll be a wise person today. Yeah. I will be wise. Something we could have settled in five minutes. Day of repentance. Five minutes and it's done. Day of restoration. Five minutes and it's done. Day of salvation. Five minutes and it's done. And we refuse and we reject and then eventually we come to the great day of return unto God. Today will be your day of salvation. Your day of reconciliation with God. And the day of a great mighty change in your life in Jesus name. Three things we're looking at. Number one, we're looking at the gracious day 
of repentance before the God of grace. It's so wonderful. He invites everyone. He said, I'm delaying the judgment. I'm pushing ahead the judgment. You remember? For the people in the days of Noah, God said, I give them 120 years. You will think that all through the 120 years, those people will be reasonable. No. Sin makes people unreasonable, unrealistic. And whatever chance you give, as it was yesterday for them, so it is today and so it is forever. One year went and Noah was a preacher of righteousness. He wasn't an entertaining preacher. No. He was he made serious. He made everything he said serious because he knew the day of reckoning was coming. And second second year passed, tenth year passed, repent, be righteous, turn away from your evil. The final day will come. Even if you're giving 120 years, the final year, the final day will still come. Eventually, 120 years passed. And God said, Noah, the final day I told you about, the flood will come. And they were saying, flood, have you seen rain before? They had never seen rain. And that day came. I pray you'll be wise. And then God told Noah, enter into the ark. He entered, his wife entered, the three sons entered, the three wives entered, eight people. After preaching for 120 years, eight people, they entered and God locked the door. All the others, then the flood began. They began to cry, Uncle Noah, Uncle Noah, you remember me? You preached to me. I wasn't ready then. I am ready now. Friends, the day of reckoning and the day of return had come. They were not ready. Today, you will be ready. Yeah. Number two is the gloomy day of reckoning at the gate of God. Eventually, we'll be there. We'll all be there. You'll be there. I will be there. Whatever I'm doing in secret, everything is being written down. And on that day, at the gate of God, all those secret things uh, preachers do, that their congregations don't know, all those things that bishops do, all those things that priests do, all those things that pastors do, that nobody knows anything about, there is a reckoning day, and then we come. We can deceive people, but you cannot deceive God. It will be a great gloomy day of reckoning at the gate of God. I pray you will settle everything today. Yeah. Am I talking to somebody there? Yeah. You said you need today in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number three, yeah, the glorious day of our return to the God of glory. I will be there. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. By the grace of God, you'll be there in Jesus' name. And when the saints go marching in, not sinners, the sinners will not have any feet to march in to the kingdom. They're not saved. They have not repented. They have not given their lives to the Lord. Yes, they're religious. They drum. They dance. They do disco. And, uh, you know, they throw their buttocks here and out there. But uh, they're not worshiping God. They're just worshiping the flesh. And there's no repentance. There is no change of life. When that day comes, it's when the saints are marching in. Not when sinners are marching in. They're not marching. They'll not be there. Not when backsliders are marching in. When the saints are marching in, thank God, I, 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 
I will be there. You'll be there in Jesus' name. Look at number one here. Number one, we're talking about the gracious day of repentance before the God of grace. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verse 30. Acts chapter 17, verse 30. And the times of this ignorance God went at. But now commandeth all men, all men everywhere to repent. Commandeth this our day. It's the day of repentance. He commands all men to repent. Why? Look at verse 31. In verse 31, because he has appointed a day. Look at that. He has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained. He has appointed whereof he has given assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead. He says he commands now all men to make use of this opportunity and make today the day of repentance. Look at Second Peter chapter 3 Reading from verse 9, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. When Noah told the people, and he said, judgment is coming. There's going to be a deluge, a flood. It will cover the whole earth. <laughs> this, okay, I hear flood, water, rain, covering the whole earth. And everybody will be swept away. They continued in their trade. They continued in their business. They continued in marriage. Marriages, actually. They marry one. And after some months, they drop that and marry another one. And after some months, they drop that and marry another one. They say, after all, the women are there. And the women are more than the men. And there are so many women roaming the streets. And so I can, you know, help myself. They were marrying and giving in marriage until the day, until the day, the reckoning day eventually came. They didn't repent. There are people today, you have heard, we've taken this GCK from here to there to there. And now we come to your city and we declare the day of his power. Power to save. Power to turn your life around. Power to purify. Power to sanctify. Power to so empower you. You live a clean life, a victorious life. But you know there are people, as the days are going, it's okay, judgment is coming. Where is the judgment? Ninety years passed. And Noah went back to those same people. Judgment is coming. Repent. They said, you know, we can't see any evidence that anything is coming on. That's what the Lord is saying. The Lord is not slack. Concerning his promise, he's only being patient for you and for me. He says, but he is long-suffering towards what? Not willing that any should perish. You will not perish. I will not perish. If I make use of the privilege, of the opportunity, of the day of repentance. Look at that. It says it's not willing for any to perish, but that all should come to repentance. He wants you to make this day your day of repentance. Your day of saying, I am sorry. 
for all those things I did that the policeman in my inner man, the conscience, was telling me, I'm your police, I arrest you again. You've done that thing again. You've gone that place again. You've defiled yourself with that thing again. You have, uh, you, you go behind a closed door. You have smoked that thing again. You go behind the closed door that they will not see me. Pastor will not see me. I'm a member of the choir and you look nice on the outside. But behind the closed door look at what you're doing and everything has record but if you come today and you see all the secret things and all the public things and all the things you've done with a bad intention you're not really worshiping god you had your own thing you were doing it says now he has commanded that all shall come to repentance and this will be your day your day of reconciliation with god in jesus name yeah. it's for the young it's for the old it's for the boys it's for the girls it's for the mothers it's for the fathers it's for the preachers it's for the pew it's for everyone because this is the glorious gracious day of repentance before the final scene will come uh, that's why the songwriter puts it in a very good way it says there's a great day coming a great day coming there's a great day coming by and by you will not say you did not hear when the saints and the sinners shall be parted right and left are you ready for that day to come if you have not repented you are not ready if you have not given your life to the lord you are not ready if you are still swimming in religion but you don't have righteousness you are not ready are you ready are you ready are you ready for the day of judgment today is your day to be ready i will be ready i will be ready oh pastor you are ready preaching you are ready well i understand but you know preaching does not make anybody ready judas is carried out preach but wasn't ready there are people if you give your body to be burned, you are fanatical for religion, but you are not born again. You don't have the love of God and the love of Christ in you. And you can kill, you can destroy, because that person is of another religion. And I hate anybody that doesn't go, that doesn't come to my church, doesn't come to my own religion. You might give your body to be burnt and be fanatical if you don't have the might of Christ, the nature of the Lord, and the nature of love. That religion is vain. That tradition is vain. The worship is vain. You might even fast 40 days, 40 days I'm fasting. What are you fight, fasting for? For the, um, you know, for the dead to rise. I want to have power. Uh, somebody came to me some years ago. He was uh, a kind of, he was dying. Because he had fasted for 40 days. He said, I will fast. And he did. He did. He fasted 40 days. And he came to me with his wife. He said, Pastor, I need prayer. I said, what's the problem? He said, I am sick, almost dying. And I said, what shall it cause this? He said, well, I don't know, but I was seeking for power. And I fasted 40 days, nonstop. And, uh, but when I finished the 40 days, I said, what were you fasting for 40 days? He said, I wanted power, power to raise the dead, power to heal the sick. I said, uh, okay, <laughs> and now after the fasting, uh, you're almost dying now. He said, yes. 
was talking with low voice and I asked the wife I said why tell me before the fasting were you both in agreement together love in the family fellowship in the family he said pastor I cannot tell lie we were in the agreement we were fighting and my husband just said, okay, <laughs> well, I, I fight you. Even if I fast, even when I fast, you do anything I don't like, I will smash you. And he was fasting in that condition. My friend, the fasting does not take anybody to heaven. He has not told you that, you know, you must fast for 40 days. But he said, you must repent. Preachers. Prayer warriors, people who are used to fasting, you fast and fast and fast. Have you repented? Is anger there? Are you of bad temper? Are you stealing church money? Are you doing evil? Are you corrupting? Are you messing up with those ladies all around you? Fasting will not do. You must repent. Here is the glorious day of repentance before the God of grace. You have grace today. Yeah. Where am I? Grace today. Yeah. Forgiveness today. Freedom today. Salvation today. Reconciliation today with God in Jesus' name. Yeah. God bless your amen. Yeah. We're coming to number two now. Number two is the gloomy day of reckoning at the gate of God. The gloomy day. Uh, look at that again in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7. It says then, shall the dust return to the earth as each was and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. You see, when we talk of dust returning to dust, you look at yourself, you say, I'm just 38 and I still have a long way to go. But you know, those days come and come so rapidly that now you're about to go. And I think so put up from the age of 16, 18, not now. I repent another time. 22, 24, not now. I repent another time. Look at the things so put up. And now the time is going. I don't know. The day of return unto the Lord for reckoning may take place any time from now then shall the doors return to the earth look at verse 14 there in verse 14 it says for god shall bring every work unto judgment god shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing every secret thing you buried it and you throw dust on it and you thought nobody will know when Cain killed Abel he looked here look there look everywhere there's nobody and he killed Abel and God said Cain Cain the blood of your brother that you killed is crying unto me he thought he did it secretly when David sent for Beersheba and did watch a person who had written one psalm ten psalms thirty psalms a person who had written seventy two psalms should not have done and then he covered it and with all the people in the palace he put his hand on his sleeves he said you people in my palace 
it's not everything you see you're talking about and so nobody was talking about it and the husband of Beersheba who could have reacted protested king what have you done to my wife that husband had been killed who else now will know anything that had been done and God told the prophet he said go to David and tell him thank God for a prophet like Nathan I said thank God for such a prophet there are some prophets once they are receiving remuneration money from the king from the powers that be their mouths are muscle they cannot talk but thank God for Nathan he came to David and uh, he, he told him a story you, you know the story already and David said a man like that in my kingdom he, he, had, he thought nobody knew what he did he did that they said the judgment and then Nathan pointed at him and said thou art the man but thank God that broke him down and David made that day that day of confrontation the day of his repentance he repented and God forgive him you repent today God will forgive you everything you've done everywhere you've gone every evil you've done public or private the Lord will forgive in Jesus name but you see it says God will bring every work to judgment we're looking at Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 as it is appointed unto men wants to die anyone that is born into this world also as another day a day of appointment of death it is appointed unto men wants to die and after this the judgment did you hear that say yes, yes uh, you know I'm sorry for people in religion because you know we we go to church I go to church you go to church many people here we go to church and eventually somebody dies and the when he as he dies they put the body in the mortuary one month two months six months one year and then uh, they bring uh, the body out he's been dead for one year and when he died dust returned to earth although they have not put it inside the grave and the spirit returns to God and then somebody now comes to preach and he says we are here today and um, our son our beloved daughter has died but we're going to pray that God you will show him mercy pastor it's too late priest it's too late the day that man died and the body was separated from the spirit that day the spirit returned unto God and if he did not have Christ as a savior if he did not have repentance in his record already judgment has taken place and after the fellow had spent one year on the other side now the priest is praying and is saying have mercy on him we're deceiving their relatives we're deceiving the people that still are alive remember the story jesus told about lazarus he died and the angels took him straight 
to Abraham's bosom. And the rich man died also, and his body was buried. That same moment that that rich man died, then the soul went to the other side. Don't deceive anybody anymore. You always want to see something good and something nice uh, to comfort the people. You're comforting them in their unrepentant situation. Why don't you tell them? Uh, forget about the man that died. Talk about the people who are still alive. And say, it is appointed unto men once to die. And then it says, after this, the judgment. And if we're not going to face that judgment, if we're going to have the mercy of God, this is the time to have the mercy of God. And the mercy of God comes to you tonight that this will be your day of repentance in Jesus' name. And this will be your day of reconciliation, the day of restoration, and the day of your redemption in Jesus' name. Give me good and no go, amen. It will be the day of your recovery. The day of your recovery. That if you're sick in your body, here is still the grace of God. Judgment has not come yet. And the Lord is still waiting, not willing that anyone shall perish, but all shall come to repentance. This will be your time and this will be your day in Jesus' name. Uh, what if, uh, you know, somebody, a religious man, he waits and waits and waits, and the opportunity is there for you tonight, for him tonight, for her tonight, uh, to just, just surrender to the Lord, surrender, surrender, and all to Jesus, I surrender. All in my heart, all in my life, the sins of the past and anything in my heart, I surrender to Christ today. It will not take you five minutes, but you know, there are people that say other people are here, and uh, you know, if I indicate and raise up my hand, they say, ah, so and so, so and so, why not, why not? All the people that may look at you, they know that you cannot save yourself. All the people that look at you, they know by the good works of your hands shall no man be justified. But they know the people that you are saying, eh, they will see that I'm giving my life to Christ. Of course, of course, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believers in him shall not perish but have everlasting life do it and then your name will enter into the book of life give me a good good amen, amen. hebrews chapter 10 I'm reading from verse 30 hebrews chapter 10 we're reading from verse 30 for we know him that I said, vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, says the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. The Lord shall judge his people. We're told in First Peter, a judgment will begin in the house of God. The people who have heard message after message after message, judgment will start in the house of God. And if it first begin at all, where will they be who have rejected, disobeyed, and pushed away the gospel? Look at verse 31. In verse 31, it is a fearful scene to fall into the hands of the living God. To fall into the hands of the living God. I'm looking at Judas Iscariot. And he's, uh, you know, sharing the same meal, the same message, the same prayer with Peter, James, and John. But he had a secret agenda he was pursuing. And Jesus said, 
That thing you want to do, <laughs> do it quickly. But let me tell you, it were better a man that does that were not born. And Judas was so secretive that none of the disciples felt or knew that that could be true of Judas Iscariot. He played his game of sinning so well, nobody knew. But eventually, you know how he died? He's now on the other side. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But the day of repentance is here, and the day of reconciliation with God is here. I pray that this day, your reconciliation will happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Did I see a good amen there? Yeah. There's a sad day coming. A sad day coming. There is a sad, sorrowful day coming by and by. And it says, when the sinner shall hear his doom depart, I know ye not. Are you ready for the day to come? It's coming. And we are not the only people speaking about it. The songwriter is speaking about it, saying, Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? I come to number three now. I come to point number three the glorious day. This will be your glorious day. This will be your happy day. And this will be your day of repentance, of recovery, of reconciliation in Jesus' name. The glorious day of our return to the God of glory. Your return. I said, you will return. And when you return, whosoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. He will not push you away. He will not reject you. But you must come with all sincerity. There's no hypocrisy. You must come and say, Lord, I come out of my sin. Lord, I come to thee out of darkness out of the secret cult, out of the evil deeds of lie, I come. Out of the profession of evil. You know, there are people that have evil profession. The profession that destroys other people's lives. The profession that scatters other people's families. The profession that uh, makes a concoction to poison an enemy bad profession but today you come out of all that and you say lord i come i come out of spiritual death i come unto you and the lord will receive you i said the lord will receive you and one of these days when the day of resurrection will come and the day of the rapture will come and the day of reward will come and the saints go marching in will i be there will i be there will you be there by the grace of god in the love of god by the mercy of god you will be there in john chapter 14 verse 1 John chapter 14 verse 1 it says let not your heart be troubled if you have repented and you have been reconciled with God let not your heart be troubled if you have confessed your sin and forsaken your sin let not your heart be troubled if you are yielding to the Lord and you say I surrender all I surrender all all to Jesus my Savior blessed Savior I surrender all when you come and you surrender to the Lord let not your heart be troubled anymore you believe in God 
and ye believe also in me. It says in verse 2, in verse 2 it says, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for I go to prepare a place for I go to prepare a place for for you is preparing that place for you uh, look at this fellow there's a new mansion being prepared for him uh, the most expensive uh, in town the most expensive uh, in our state the most expensive in our country and that mansion is being prepared for him and the one who has gone to prepare the mansion said come on come up rise up come away i'm taking you to the new mansion and then he's slowing down he's staying behind and we look at him we watch him he's taking some rocks He's taking some useless utensils. He's taking some broken pot. I would say, what are you doing? He says, I've been using this for so many years. And even though you say there's a new mansion there, I want to take this with me. But you'll not be allowed to take all those rocks with you. There are people, they're still taking all the things of the world, all the dregs of the world, all the evil in the world. And Jesus is saying, what do you need that for? Drop all that and follow me because a great man mansion is waiting for you on high you will have it I said you'll have it you know but when you enter you can only enter with the Savior you and sin cannot enter there the smallest of sins the least of sins will not be allowed in that place to enter with you and if you have a bosom a bosom bosom sin partner and the sin partner says i'm not ready to leave what we're doing and then to go to meet jesus to have salvation so if you love me stay here with me well yet the choice is yours you want to die or the same partner you want you love that same partner so much you say i will go to hell because of you god forbid i say god forbid look at that phone you have in your hand there are some dirty pictures there almost naked women there and that little phone that accesses all the rubbish and everything that phone when the fire will burn on earth all the phones will be burnt away and they'll melt away and yet that thing on the phone the pornography there is what is keeping you you want to die with pornography you don't want to come to this heavenly place the Lord has for you you will not be a foolish man you will not be a foolish woman you will not be a foolish boy a foolish girl in Jesus name in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you look at verse 3 in verse 3 it says and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Praise the Lord, Jesus is coming again. I said, Jesus is coming again. It's about to come. If you see the signs happening now in the world, it's about to come. If you're listening to the Spirit of God, it's about to come. Anyone who wants to get saved, this is the time to get saved. And then it says, when he comes again, I will receive you unto myself. Heaven, 
we are going to heaven. I am going to heaven. Heaven, I said we are going to heaven. All the things of this world, everything will pass away. And then it says, I receive you unto myself that where I am. Where is Jesus now? Where I am is on the right hand side of the almighty God in heaven. I can imagine you, I'm talking about you now, being taken to heaven. I can imagine you see all those angels and you are in the midst. I'm imagining now you'll see Peter, you'll see John, you'll see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. I'm imagining you in particular. You'll be in the midst and you'll say, Welcome, welcome, welcome. The angels will welcome you home in Jesus' name. It's a glorious day. There's a bright day coming. A bright day coming. There is a bright day coming by and by. And then it tells us, but it, its brightness shall only come to them that love the Lord. Are you ready for that day to come? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the reckoning day? I pray God will make you ready. Yeah. Repentance, we can now repent. Reconciliation, we can be reconciled with God. Readiness, we can be ready as we now come and we we'll say, I will not allow this day of repentance to pass by. I must reconcile with God. The Lord is holding the heavenly pen right now and is opening the book of life right now about to write your name. Your name. Your name. Because whosoever was not found reaching in the book of life shall be turned to the lake of fire forever and ever but you you are favored you're fortunate you are loved the mercy of God comes to you now as you repent and your name will enter into the book of life what is the person I'm talking about amen amen I say amen for you I rejoice for you there is joy in heaven over one sinner that repented. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Heads bowed and eyes closed. The Lord wants to favor you now. He wants to forgive you now. He wants to cleanse you now. He wants to eradicate, blot out every sin that will bring you to judgment. He wants to do it now. Here is the day of repentance for you. It's bowed, eyes closed. You're coming to Christ. Out of sin to the Savior. Out of darkness, you're coming to the light. Out of sin, you're coming to the salvation of the Lord. Wherever you are, you raise up your hand. God bless you there. Wherever you are, don't say I'm um, a church man. I understand. We're talking about being born again. We're talking about righteousness in heart and life. Don't say, um, be preacher. Yes, I understand. But we're talking about repentance unto life. That brings you to life eternal. Don't say I'm an evangelist. I understand. I understand. But look at your life. Look at those secret, secret things. If you die in that condition, we have prophesied in your name. We have done many wonderful works in your name. And yet, you are in iniquity. The Lord will say, I never knew you depart from me, ye that work in iniquity. Raise up your hand there. If you are raising up your hand, please, in the name of the Lord, please stand up. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you there. Stand up and make this day the day of repentance before the day of reckoning. Stand up there. As you are standing up, tell the Lord, O oh Lord, 
I recollect and remember the life I've been living, religious but unrighteous. I remember the life I've been living. I go to church, but even Sunday does not go without one or two sins. And of course, during the week, I'm so weak. I cannot resist sin. Tell the Lord and say, Lord, this day, the day of repentance, before the day of reckoning comes, I come to Christ. Forgive me, Lord. Change my life, Lord. And my eyes, my mind will now be focused on heaven where I am going. Tell the Lord as he forgives you, he makes you ready, ready, ready for the day to come. I'm going to pray with you now. So make up your mind, your eyes up, your hand raised. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, where is your amen? Yeah. Well, thank you because you have remembered us. And we have remembered you. We do not want to perish with the sin, with the sinners all around. And so we separate ourselves. We stand up for Jesus. We surrender unto Jesus. We are asking, Lord, all the sins that are confessed and forsaken. Forgive all your people in Jesus' name. Let this day be the day of repentance, of reconciliation, of salvation for everyone in Jesus' name. Bring the joy of salvation, the victory of salvation, the knowledge of salvation to everyone standing there in Jesus' name. Forgive all the sins of their lives. Set them free from the power and the bondage of all their sins. Help them, Lord, by your grace now to go forth and live a life of righteousness in Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God has answered your prayer. God has seen your repentance. And God has reconciled you with himself. Our counselors are there now. They will help as they take your name and they take all the details. Well, we'll call on our officiating minister tonight to help us during this counseling period. Yes, I welcome you and congratulate you to the kingdom of God by answering the call to repentance. Welcome, welcome, as you keep standing, please raise your hands up so that the counselors will see you. And counselors, let's quickly move to where they are and get their details, their names, their phone numbers, and location address, so that we can be able to help them grow in the faith. And please don't sit down until they attend to you. Fast, 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 fast. Because this night, after this exercise, you know that your miracle is on the way coming. So while you are raising up your hands and uh, your names are written, others bend down your head and be telling the Lord, I know my miracle is on the way. Supply all the information needed so that you'll be able to be assisted to grow in the faith. And for those who are listening from their various homes, or online somewhere across, across the globe, you can also, after receiving Christ, if you have received Christ this night, after the message we have just listened to this evening, there is a link uh, 
That link is below your player, gckhq.org, connect. So when you look at it, you visit that link, fill out the form there, and submit so that uh, we'll be able to reach you further and help you to grow in the Lord. Yes, our counselors quickly take the names of all that have given their lives to Christ. Make sure you reach them. Remember to still keep your hands up so that you will be seen, you will be located. This is the great experience, the greatest and foundational experience to repent, to be reconciled with God, and to have your name written in the book of life. This is a great thing that has happened tonight. Great, great, great thing. It is a great thing to meet Jesus, to have Jesus, to receive Jesus, and that's what you have done now. And the Lord is being praised in heaven by angels there is great joy in heaven because you have returned, you have reconciled with God. This is wonderful. Also, if you are listening via the radio or television and you have just given your life to Christ, please send your name, your phone number, and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to this number, I will call out now. Plus 234-915-444-9263. For those who are listening and receiving the message, or who are listening and receive the message uh, through television or radio, and you send it by WhatsApp or SMS to this number. The number again, plus 234-915-444-9263. And tomorrow also, there will be a special meeting called Lunch Hour with Jesus for all those who have given their lives to Jesus throughout the period of this crusade, which started on Thursday. That meeting will be here by 3 p.m. under the pavilion by my left-hand side, just by the entrance of the gate. Please, uh, counselors, ensure that we reach to all the people. Look at them. If you have not been uh, attended to, for those who have received Christ, you have reconciled with God, you have surrendered their life to the Lord, and the Lord have written your name now in the book of life. Because you have repented, please keep standing. And if possible, still raise your hands so our counselors quickly attend to them. And as soon as you are done, you wave the flag and move towards the front. Those who are counselors, uh, ensure that you signify to us when you finish. There will be special believers banquet for all those who gave their lives to Christ uh, during this crusade as well. On Sunday, the 3rd November uh, 2024, in all our churches globally. Uh, more details about this will be given to you uh, where you are. Our pastors will be delighted to see you, and the convener of GCK mostly also will be de delighted to have you 
join this special banquet. The Alpha Location Special Online Banquet and physical banquet as well, just as it is to be, as it going to be in all other locations, will come up on our Sunday third. The time will be 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Uh, counselors, if you are done, please can you signify by waving the flag, come towards the front uh, lines, uh, the front rows, and let's, okay, I can see somebody at the center there. Yes, those who are at the far back, come forward if you have finished taking down their names, and let's have you wave the flag to show that you have finished. By my extreme left-hand side, if we cannot see, please also move towards the front. And let's ensure that all the names have been taken. As you come forward, you wave the flag so we know you, have, uh, you are done. You are finished with them. Yes. Can we have? OK, yes. From my extreme right-hand side there. I see somebody waving. What of the center towards the back? This side. OK, I can see somebody over there again. Thank you very much. And welcome to the spiritual family of God. You are reconciled, and you will remain in the Lord. God bless you. The man of God is ready. And Coming back to cross. Rise up on your feet. The Lord will locate you. Stand on your feet. Thank you. Somebody there, praise the Lord. Your miracle is now right there. This is your day of recovery. I will recover. This sickness will not take my life. Say it well. This is my day of recovery. The Lord will do it right now. You raise up one hand, you lay the other hand where the challenge, the sickness had been. Online, they are the same thing. God is everywhere. And he's looking down from heaven right now. Because this is the moment of your recovery. Do that now. Resolve the hand. Let the other hand where the challenge is. The Lord has seen you. You will recover. I will recover. In Jesus' name, yeah. confirm the expectation of all your children, all your people, in Jesus' name. Yeah. Recovery for everyone. Yeah. Healing for everyone. Yeah. Deliverance for everyone. Yeah. Miracle for everyone. Lord, your name will never fail. Yeah. And in that name, victorious name, triumphant name, healing name, we pray that you heal everyone expecting healing now in Jesus' name. Yeah. Madness, insanity, come out in Jesus' name. Yeah. Blind eyes, dim eyes, glaucoma, cataract, blood in the eyes, whatever. Lord, I pray recovery of sight for the blind now in Jesus' name. 
the loss of their hearing the loss of their vocal ability to speak i pray right now restoration of your voice restoration of your hearing you are not dumb anymore you are not deaf anymore receive your healing in jesus name weakness because of the much blood flowing out of your body pain terrible pain you don't even know where to lay your hand anymore i pray the health you have lost the soundness you have lost the weakness in you right now everything the lord make you recover your health in jesus name you are healed you are healed the problem of breathing asthma lung cancer and the lung problem lord i pray you make them recover their health soundness right now in jesus name heal them lord no sickness will remain in that person heal them lord in jesus name your hands are withered you cannot pull the hand you cannot stretch the hand you cannot raise the hand recover right now your joints you have lost the use of your joints you can't bend you can't stand you can't move recover now in jesus name that paralysis i command paralysis get out in jesus name recover the ability to stand recover the ability to walk the ability to stand out of that wheelchair and you throw the crutches away and you have the ability by yourself now to walk to stand even to run in jesus name lord everyone here to the right over there recovery in front of me here recovery on that side good side recovery online everywhere recovery in jesus name you are redeemed from the curse of the law every sickness completely healed every infirmity totally taken away you are healed you are healed i am healed it is confirmed from heaven on your life in jesus name thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord total recovery for everyone in jesus name we pray amen i have recovered i am healed i am delivered yeah, if you know you are healed you are recovered and you are delivered why don't you stand up there why don't you see that those things that were prayed about god has worked the healing miracle in your life Amen.